Hey, good afternoon. Cindy Daycheck here with Queen Bee Creations. And we're going to be wrapping up today the work that we've been doing on this big uh, antique buffet. It's looking very gray from when you last saw it. So let me, let me catch y'all up on what's happened. Um, if you were with me, the last video. So the first video was when we took it from its beautiful antique pine state that a lot of you said that you loved. And then we painted it orange and yellow and coral. <laughs> and we took it to the, I think the last comment from someone, bless your heart, was, oh no. <laughs> so we took it to the oh no stage. And then last video, what we were doing was beginning to put our color washes on top. And rather than mixing up a wash, and, and a wash for those of you that aren't familiar is just simply watered down paint. And the more water that you add, the more translucent it's going to be. The less water, the more opaque. Kind of makes sense. Um, but when you apply your wash with a brush, then you are um, sometimes risking doing damage to the colors below. And because I was using DIY paint, which is Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint, which is a clay-based paint, water reactivates the paint, which is a huge plus with wanting to do a lot of blending, but it can mean that if I was doing a wash, I might be lifting off some of that color and I want to make sure it stayed. And I was really looking for kind of a lighter feel, a lighter look. So what I did do was I mixed up my color washes and put them into a Mr. Bottle. So here's the one thing that I did learn. Adding paint to your water will destroy your Mr. Bottle. So I went through two of these suckers. Um, but with this, this is maybe about six ounces of water and I added two teaspoons of paint to it. DIY is very pigmented paint. But what it did do was just spritzing lightly over the top. And this was a mister, not just a water bottle. So it wasn't giving a really heavy coverage of water or of anything. It just lightly misted each layer that I did. The whole piece, each coat took one full bottle of this. So I started out with a couple of coats of a mid-tone gray, this color gray, which was using um, my DIY letterpress gray. So I did two coats of that. Then I did a coat of a darker gray wash, which was old school, dark, dark gray. Um, and then I did a coat of kind of a green color. I don't have it here. I'm trying to think what the name, I think, I think I might have used aviary, but it's like a farmhouse green wash. Then I did another coat of the light gray, another coat of the dark gray, and then two more coats of the light gray. So it's got lots of coats on it, but they're all really super, super light coverage. Um, and because of that, it does not have heavy layers between the colors and the paint. So if you're looking closely, and I don't know if you guys can see it as well in the video, but I think that you can still see some of the shades of yellow pop through some of the orange, some of the coral. You can still see them through some of those translucent layers because no one layer is solid, is giving perfect coverage. And that's kind of the direction that I wanted to go. So uh, because it's all kind of misted on, it feels just maybe, maybe tiny, tiny little pebbles of color sitting on the top, which means I had said I always wanted to lightly distress the piece, but I also want to just lightly sand the whole piece. So to do that, you want to use a really, really super fine sandpaper. And in fact, when I want a really, really super, super fine sandpaper, I actually use a brown paper bag. This will sand your piece. And this is also after you wax, if you really want to buff it to a really high, high gloss, use a paper bag. So I just taken a normal brown paper bag and uh, ripped it up and we're going to sand. So I want to 
and put my glasses on because I start with the wrong colors here. But I don't know if you can see, but there's little tiny pieces of the paint. They kind of being distressed off. And I am actually even seeing places where it's revealing some of the colors below, but it's starting to smooth this out. It's noisy. So just know this. I've only, I've only left this one door. I did all the rest. So you don't have to live through any of the other noises to be able to uh, get to the next stage. But you do have to bear through this one. Okay, so even with the, the bag, I'm starting to get some sections where the wood is being revealed, which I wanted. But when I'm sanding a piece, I always take my hand and I'm starting to feel where is it still a little bit rough? Where do I need to smooth it out a little bit? Pretty good. Now, the final piece that I have oops, is I do have some 320, 320 sandpaper, which I'm just taking a little tiny piece, little tiny piece, and in a couple of spots where I just wanted a little bit more distressing. So probably to take it back to the wood, reveal a little bit more of the color here that's happening. Before I get into the next step, I just want to kind of discreetly distress it a little bit more. And show off a little bit of that, that wood in there. Just a little bit where the handle is going to go. So when you're doing this, you just want some of the wear, wear areas. And again, how much you distress it is just really up to you. And in particular, the look that you're after, right? So the more rustic you want to take the piece, maybe the more heavily distressed you might make it. This, I just wanted a little bit of light distressing. This side is already done, which you might not be able to see fully, but it's not heavily distressed, right? It's just in a couple of spots, a little bit of, of the wear areas reveal a little bit more of that color. But I think that you're gonna be surprised with how much color, even though this looks really, really great, how much color is actually still coming through in the piece. Now I know there's a lot of you that were really happy that it went to gray. And I just wanna let you know before I add the wax, it's not as gray as you think. <laughs> this is always, I think, some of the surprise for folks in terms of how much that layering of color makes a difference. So we have a couple of we have a couple of steps left. Let me just get some of that sanding out of the way. We have a couple of steps left. What we have to do is to apply wax to this piece. What I have done already is I have gone ahead, because I'm going to be applying the wax, 
and I am in essence now sealing the paint. What I didn't want to do was inadvertently seal any of the paint drips and mess that was on the doors, right? So when we were spritzing, water was going in through here, it was dripping down into here. So what I have already done is I've already tidied up all of these edges. I had debated whether to paint those edges or not, and I decided um, that I wanted to leave it the natural wood. A um, couple of reasons. One, I like the look. It's got the original old hardware still on here, even though it's not functional, which I quite like. I'm leaving that. And also, just because of functionality, there are already spots where the door, even without any paint, is hitting the edges. As soon as I would be painting those edges, now it's scraping. And what's going to happen over time is you're just going to be scraping off all of that paint. And it's going to look worn and it's not going to look good. So in this case, because there's not a lot of leeway on these edges for the cabinets, I have left them free so that they can just wear naturally. It will always look good. It will always look clean. That's one of the things to keep in mind as to how much of the edges of the drawers and the cabinets do I paint or do I not paint? Look at the clearance. Usually the newer the piece, the more room there is because they're counting on the um, metal runners that exist on, on the uh, drawers. Pieces like this don't have metal runners. They're just running on the, on the wood ledges themselves. So you don't often have tons of extra space and the more layers of paint, the less space that you have. So rather than really going out of your way, taking your time to paint all of the edges up really nicely, take a look first to see whether or not the piece will take the paint, if it'll allow it or not. This piece would not. If I really, 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 really wanted to paint these, then I would need to have taken them off and I would have had to have sanded them down to have left enough, enough room. But this original hardware back here, this big metal brace piece, which I love having because it's original to the piece, is flush with this. I couldn't have sanded this down, which means that I would have been taking off all of that hardware off the side. I would have to been sanding all that down, reapplying all of that hardware just to see if it sits back enough to have allowed this to be closing. And then I would have probably have had to been adding um, some hardware down here, latches for it to be able to click shut. I'm hoping that um, once I add the hardware, that it's just able to sit naturally, right? Because it's got a little bit of that stick factor happening naturally, wood to wood, so it's gonna be fun. Just a couple of little things to bear in mind sometimes as you're going. But I always do the drawer cleanup before I do the sealing of it, whether I'm using a poly or whether I'm using a wax. Um, I love the look and the feel of wax and I will use it more often than I will a poly. That's just personal preference. You can use whichever, okay? Whichever you like, whichever you would prefer. Um, I have not had any difficulty selling pieces that are wax versus poly. So I just find that especially with these older pieces, wax is a little bit more in keeping with the look and the feel of it. Personal, I love the feel. So, when we go to wax, and I've got two waxes here. I have clear, which is the main one that we're gonna be using. And then I do um, plan on using a little bit of dark wax. But, here's the big thing that's gonna happen here. When I apply this wax, it's going to wet my paint. So it's going to go dark again. You're gonna see more of the colors pop through. You're, gonna, you're now gonna see Oh, there really is a lot of color in that piece. It will dry lighter than what you see, but it will not go this light, right? So it's gonna dry in between this and what it looks like wet. You'll see what I mean. So this is just, I've got any Sloan wax because that's what I have. DIY is not the easiest thing for me to get in this area, and quite honestly, I've never had a problem with any slow wax. I've always liked it. So I have to admit, I have yet to try DIY wax. I'm sure I would love it, <laughs> but I love any 
and these little grass too. That's what I'm using. So you can see that it's looking gray still because it's picking up all of those layers of gray I added, but you're already starting to see more of those colors starting to pop from where they were at, right? Let's get down here where we know that we've got a little bit of the yellow to pop through. This is just a nice, big, squishy, flat wax brush that I'm able to really kind of push into all of those corners and get the coverage. And when you're applying the wax, you can see what still looks dry, where the wax is, where it hasn't been. I really like to push it right in so it looks like it takes a bit of muscle, which it does. But you can apply it with a cloth if you want. You don't have to use the big brush. And I do that very often on pieces that are a lot flatter or simpler or um, that have a lot of curves or spindles or that kind of thing where it would be more challenging. And I'll probably get out... Some of the, the cloth to get some of the weird edges where my finger will fit way better than any brush. Well, already you can see the difference, yeah? Right? Big difference. Just know it'll dry in between these two colors. But you see what I said about it looks kind of all gray until we get that wax on and see how all those colors start to pop up through those gray layers. That's one of the beauties of having done the wash rather than layering the paint over. If we layered the paint over, we would only see color exactly where we distress back to it. So you can have a much more controlled look, a little bit less of this kind of slightly pastel-y kind of rainbow look right both are beautiful techniques but with this one i wanted to show you kind of an alternative for a different look kind of this soft colorful look rather than a big bold colorful look i think that usually when we see colorful pieces they're really kind of eye-catching really um a, a little bit loud maybe in your face and I wanted you to see that you can do kind of multiple colors. You can do a lot of colors without it having to be a solid or something that's totally kind of in your face and outlandish, right? That there's options. And a lot of it just has to do with sometimes how you apply the paint. And I am, I am enjoying the look of it. Now, we'll see when the whole piece is done, if it seems too colorful for it or not. And then I have options. But on the little pieces I've exposed, and, and, and I did do the two sides. I left all of the front here and the top of the piece as well undone. So it's also going to depend once I see all of that together. Because you might love pieces of it, and then when you see it in its entirety, sometimes it just might look too much. Definitely seeing all the colors popping out now, right? But still very, um, still very muted, right? It's still not a, a super bold or in your face kind of piece. And I gotta tell you, up close, man, there's some really beautiful spots on this where you're seeing um, multiple colors all merging in one spot. Um, you're seeing some of the 
the little bit of the drips that happened from, from the spraying, which is kind of cool. I'm definitely seeing each of the colors in some areas, right? And um, the green, adding that little bit of green, I think was a really good call. That added a lot to the piece in terms of some of the dimension to it. And oops, and adding some color. This is where I start to feel like, okay, I haven't worked out for a while. This is a workout. <laughs> this, this is definitely getting my blood going and the heart pumping. And I do work work my my right arm out, <laughs> my right shoulder out. More than the left, though. I need to learn to do these heavy duty tasks with my left hand a little bit more. Or oh, this one likes to. Sink down in. Sit on your pen, Nick. Okay, so that's our clear wax, which looks, looks pretty colorful. I'm looking in, in your screen, looks pretty, com pretty colorful. It's gonna mute down a little bit. We'll see what it looks like then and where to go. So what I don't wanna do is react fully to it now and think, oh, it's too much. And then try and tone it down and then see once it's dry, oh, it's too flat. So because this is gonna go a little bit more um, subtle once it dries, then I'm not looking to do anything too drastic to it now. What I do wanna do though, is add a little bit of dark wax. So, Dark wax is kind of like a brown wax that looks kind of black for you, but trust me, the black is very black. Um, and a couple of ways that I apply this. Often I will use a really fine, fine brush to just get into really delicate details. I may do that on the upper piece, which has around all the scroll work. But for this, um, I take an old chip brush that I've cut down into almost like a little nubby kind of thing. You always want to apply this after, after clear wax. Now you could apply it before clear wax, but no, it's going to sink right down into your paint, right? So it's going to make the whole thing go dark because I've got the clear wax on. I can use that clear wax to, as a bit of a barrier to the dark wax in my paint, right? So I can, put it on and then I can kind of rub it off. And you can see the difference between the two. Just seeing if you guys can see the difference. I can see the difference between the two. So this is much darker. It's sunk down into all the crevices. It looks a little bit more aged because, hey, that's what time would have done to that. And I'm just gonna wanna do that to a couple of areas. Now, if you, have put on your clear wax, you add your dark wax and you think, oh my gosh, I really hate that. That was a mistake. Take some clear wax, wax on a rag and you can use it as a bit of an eraser, okay? That it would allow you to remove, remove it. I will say this though, everybody makes it sound like you can remove it and you can remove it all. No, <laughs> it's still gonna have a little bit of it, it's still gonna be sitting in there. So just know that. But 
The nice thing about this is in some of these places where, gee, it was a little too bright, you can use the dark wax as a way to be able to um, just darken that detailing up a little bit, right? And I'm just going down in these crevices a little bit, and then I'm just wiping it back so that it's sitting down in those cracks a little bit more than sitting up in top, right? Now, best tool out there, your finger. Here, I just want to add a little bit of this to some of the edging. And I'm just kind of blending it right down in. This is where my hardware is going to go. It's just a little bit subtle, but it starts to add some of that character, some of that aging into the piece. And look for the spots that would normally be a little bit more of where it would wear, you know, in around the hardware. So these existing little uh, hinges down in the corners. And it kind of blends down in. So it's not necessarily that you're always getting, you know, if you look at the piece and, and, and you see this, this harsh line somewhere, you, you needed to wipe that back. What you're looking at is that it just enhances the piece so that overall, it's kind of subtle, but it looks better with than it did without. Right. So that's how I'm spending my afternoon. <laughs> what I'm going to do is while this is still a little bit wet, I'm going to go and I'm not going to add the rest of the dark wax in strategic spots and just a little bit. This, this, this area, this is done already but you can see a little bit of the difference between the two, right, in the light. This one's a little bit lighter because you're right by the window anyway. But it's just to, to add in a little bit of that aging here and there, give it back a little bit of that age. I will do that for the whole piece. I will let it dry overnight. Tomorrow morning, then I am going to buff it out. So that's when um, the wax has had a chance to kind of dry up a little bit. This has no excess wax on it. So I made sure that it was a nice even level coat. If you see any globs of wax sitting in any of the crevices, I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure those aren't there. I'm going to wipe them out. I don't want big globs of it to start to harden. I can get rid of it, but it's a pain in the butt. So easier to get rid of it now. I'm going to do all that today. I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm going to buff it out tomorrow. And then I'll, then I'll stand back and I'll take a look at, is it done? Does it need more? If I need to tone it down and I need to add more color, then I can do that. And I could do that um, by perhaps, maybe I want to soften it and add a white wax over the whole thing, which would give it this soft, ethereal, kind of cloudy look which would maybe work really well with some of the pastel tones that we have coming. If I just wanted to gray it up a little bit, I could mix some of my gray tone paint into my wax and then apply that to add more of that gray tone back over top. So you can mix your own colored waxes to be able to move a piece in the color direction that you want. I know that, that usually people will say, once you waxed, you're stuck and you're not. I could paint over it again if I wanted. If I really wanted to have an opaque look, then I would be best to remove the wax because it's new wax. If this was an old piece that had been waxed, you could just paint over it with, with the guy would paint, it's not gonna matter. But because this is fresh wax, it's going to resist the paint, which is cool if I wanted to, to also be able to do a lot of distressing. There'll be times that I'll, I'll do some wax in spots as, I, as I'm going on the layers. For this, it probably would be a little bit problematic if I just wanted to repaint the whole thing gray. 
So if I decided, oh my gosh, what the hell did I do? This looks awful. I need it to go gray. Um, then I probably need to remove the wax with some mineral spirits. This all is really easy. Again, it's a little heartbreaking, but it's entirely doable. I would probably, if I decided that I wanted it a little bit more gray, I would go the gray wax route first. It's going to be a little bit easier and it's going to give you some control and I'm still going to be able to make use of all the layers and all the colors that I've already done in the piece. So um, it would just add just a little bit more of that gray tone back in. Right now, I'm kind of liking how it's going. We'll see how it looks with the whole piece finished before I commit one way or the other. But all I'm doing the rest of the day is adding the clear wax and a little bit of the dark wax strategically. I'll buff it up tomorrow and then we'll see. We'll see what it looks like and where I need to go with it. The hardware, I am leaving old. I am not going to polish it up. I am leaving it, the original hardware, in its tarnished state because I love it and it fits with the age of the piece. So I am not going to change out the color. I'm not spray painting it. Um, I'm not changing it out for new. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's functional. It fits the piece and all of that tarnished elements on it is awesome. So I love the look and I'm going to be leaving it that way. We'll see how you feel when it's done, but thanks for joining me. Hope you like the direction that it's going. I definitely wanted to show you the difference of the wax. It will lighten up some, but it won't go back to that original solid gray. We'll see how it looks when it's done. Take care. Have a great day. Go do something creative. See you.